Greetings, Wanderer. It is my pleasure to introduce you to a unique tour, one that won't take you to impressive landmarks or famous battle sites, but through a typical Athenian home. My name is Aspasia. Though I am not originally from Athens, I have climbed to the top of its social ladder using my wit and intellect. I've even earned the love of Pericles, one of the most powerful men in the city. The mind truly is a beautiful thing. If Olibos is Zeus's sanctuary, then my house is my own. It is a place where I can shelter myself from the noise and stress of city life. For an outgoing people like the Greeks, the house was a refuge of privacy. Inside, they could escape from the constant demands of civic life to enjoy the simple pleasures of family life. Look for me when you are done, and we can discuss the things you've seen. Farewell for now. The house, or oikos, was a residence for Greek families and their slaves. Contrary to modern houses, which look outward, the Greek household was built to look inward on a courtyard. The courtyard was the house's central fixture. It was the building's main source of daylight and also the location of religious altars dedicated to worship. The building itself was made up of familiar accommodations, including bedrooms, storage rooms, a kitchen, and a living room. Women were generally in charge of tending to the home, which in Greece was called oikonomia, a term that inspired the modern word economy. A pasta was a corridor that connected a house's courtyard to its residential section. Archaeological evidence from the city of Olynthos reveals that pastas were added to Greek home design in the 5th century BCE. Greeks had no qualms about combining their work and their private lives, and many of them worked from home. Artisans like blacksmiths, sculptors, and potters often had workshops in their houses. Some even operated small stores to sell their work. Similarly, doctors were known to treat patients in special offices located in their homes. Women also worked in the house and were responsible for making textiles, as well as producing clothes and supervising weaving, which was carried out by slaves. If the household was wealthy enough, they could even produce a surplus of textiles to sell in times of financial difficulty. <laughs> the inner courtyard was the nexus of the house. Functionally, it allowed air to circulate and also provided access to most of the rooms. It also sometimes housed a well or a cistern that collected rainwater. In the center of the courtyard was an altar to Zeus Hercules, who served as the protector of the household. Women would often use the space to sew and cook, while children used it as a play area. Furthermore, if the family had pets or animals, the courtyard was where they were allowed to run free. The bathroom was located in the back of the house. Much like today, it was used for cleaning and washing, although the Greeks used chamber pots instead of toilets. Most bathrooms had a luterion that could be filled with water for washing. Mirrors, razors, strigils, and sponges could also be found in the bathroom, along with small vases called arebaloi, which were usually filled with perfume or oil. Thank you. 
Greek homes had kitchens where the family's meals were prepared. The Greeks did not often eat meat, except during special occasions like banquets or after sacrifices. They had mainly a grain-based diet, eating staples such as bread, porridge, or a barley cake called maza. They also occasionally ate poultry, fish, and other seafood, as well as fruits, vegetables, goat milk and cheese, and olive oil. Food was cooked on a tripod, or sometimes in a klebanos, which was a sort of mobile oven. Other cooking implements included braziers, mortars and pestles, a spit to hold food over a fire, platters, and frying pans. The family also used the kitchen to store food in containers called pithoi. Symposia were major social institutions in Greece. They were drinking parties held exclusively for men. The party took place in the men's section of the house, the Andron, where residents and guests reclined on special couches called klinai. Food was served on low tables set in front of the couches, while wine was placed in a crater in the center of the room. During a symposium, men drank, sang, had philosophical discussions, and played games like kotobos. Musicians, dancers, and even courtesans were often welcomed to attend as well. However, wives and daughters were always excluded. The Pyrgos, or upper stories, was the women's quarter of the house where they could pursue their activities and observe the city without being seen themselves. The rooftops were also used in a special rite called the Adonia, a private celebration held in honor of Adonis, which was reserved for women. At the beginning of spring, women filled terracotta pots with soil and lettuce seeds, then climbed a ladder to place the pots on the rooftop. These pots served as the women's very own Gardens of Adonis. I hope you now have a better understanding of the routines and home life of the Greek people. What would you like to do next? Then let's start with a simple question. Which group of people celebrated the Aldonia? Men did have exclusive parties, but they were called Sibosia. Try another answer. Correct. The Aldonia was celebrated by women of all stations. Let's move on to the next question. Which of the following was known as the protector of the household? Yes, Zeus Herkios protected the household, and an altar to the god usually stood in the center of the house's courtyard. On to the final question. Which of the following was not located in the bathroom? Correct. The Clevanos was a mobile oven usually found in the kitchen. It seems you really know your way around Greek homes. Well done, Wanderer. Farewell, Wanderer, and thank you for visiting my city.